When Blood of the Dead first came out, everybody hated this map, but I've always loved it. Across the four years of me playing this map, I've beaten the Easter Egg, I've beaten the Easter Egg with no perks, I've beat the Easter Egg on hardcore mode, I've held the world record for the Easter Egg speedrun, I've beaten the Easter Egg with the Essex only, I've gotten round 100, you name it, I have done it on Blood of the Dead. Except for one thing. The realistic easter egg. For those that don't know, realistic difficulty makes it to where you have no self revives, the zombies have more health, more zombies spawn, and the hardest part about this is unrealistic you have one hit and it's game over. Since you only have one hit until you down, it renders perks like Winter's Whale, Quick Revive, and a lot of other good perks in this game completely useless. I never attempted this easter egg on realistic before, so I didn't really know what to expect in this game. But today, I will show you through all the ups, through all the downs, I will show you how I was able to beat the hardest easter egg in COD Zombies history on realistic difficulty. Before I even get into the game, I'm going to explain my class setup real quick. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Death Perception was so helpful in this easter egg, since I can see zombies around corners to know if it's safe going a certain way or something. As for why it's in the modifier, what am I going to run a dying wish that goes from being a one hit down to being a one hit down in the modifier? And Zombie Shell was 100% a mistake. I originally wanted to bring Luna in this game so she could help me with the shower step and the warden step, but I guess I just misclicked and didn't see I put Zombie Shell on before it was too late. But it was really helpful when it would stun zombies, so I'm not going to hate on it. When I spawned in, the very first thing that I did was use raindrops to get me a bunch of points. These zombies are very strong and realistic. Even round 1 zombies, they're like the equivalent of round 4 or round 5 zombies in normal difficulty. Combine that with it being a one hit game over, I just didn't want to risk downing, even on round 1. So, with my points, I turned on the east power switch and bought the best perk in the game, which is of course Victorious Tortoise, and then I popped the shields up. At this point, when I'm holding my shield out, I now have some protection from the zombies. It's not much, as you'll soon find out, because the shield breaks in like 3 hits, but any help is great. From here, I filled up the first dog and made my way to the catwalk. As you can see from the gameplay, I played the first part of this easter egg very cautiously. Because like I said, this was my first attempt at doing this easter egg on realistic, and I didn't know quite what to expect yet in this game mode. But something I learned while clearing the catwalk is the zombie hands that poke through the catwalk can actually damage you and bypass Victorious Tortoise somehow. So that means that if I'm not paying attention and took 5 hits from these arms, I could have died very easily. But anyways, while I was crossing the catwalk, I legit killed just about every single zombie with my shield key because, again, I'm just playing that cautious right now. And eventually, I crossed the catwalk, which took about 5 minutes in total, and I was pretty happy about it. Alright, realistic catwalk. <laughs> Done. That makes me feel good. I've played like two games of realistic ever in BO4 Zombies. So even the smallest of accomplishments in this game, I was celebrating. So from here, I went to go fill up the second dog. And while doing it, I actually got overran. So I had to pull my sword out to save myself. And since I already had it out, I went down to go fill up the monkey bombs while I could. Because if you don't know this Easter egg, the simplest way I can explain it is the sooner we get to monkey bombs, the sooner we can start this quest. But while doing this, I got really greedy and then my sword went away. And and then my shield broke. So I popped the shields up to get a new one, but then this happened. Wait, what? The hell happened? I used my shields up, but it didn't give me a shield. So apparently, if you pop something like shields up to repair your shield, then it'll actually consume the elixir, but it won't give you the effects for it. Which was pretty annoying, and since I didn't know this, I was freaking out at this point. Even on round 3, these zombies are pretty hard to kill. And I already used one of my raindrops, so it was already too late to reset. So I sat in the mob spawn room watching each doorway, and after I ended the round, I popped shields up, and it actually gave me a shield this time. Give me back my comfort shield. Ugh. Dude, that was so stressful. It was round three. But hey, no PB on blood. The next round was a dog round, so I used this time to turn on the second power switch and build the zombie shield as well. This is when I noticed how easily the zombies can break a shield in realistic. Oh my god, dude. Dude, what the hell is realistic? So as you can see, even with Victorious Tortoise, this does not make it free. It makes it a lot easier, but when the zombies can break a shield in like 5 hits, it still makes this incredibly difficult. 
but after that, I grabbed my numbers for the spoon and filled up the final dog. It's kind of funny because at this point, I'm 20 minutes into the game and I'm just now noticing everything that's going on. But now is when I realized that I had zombie shell on instead of blood wolf bite. And again, it's a pretty funny reaction. Hey there, boy. Wanna Wait, why is Zom shell on? Bro, I put on blood wolf bite. And when I heard Dempsey whistle, I thought that's what it was for. And I was like, I didn't buy Luna yet. Yeah, well, I guess I'm never gonna buy her now. Just like I did for crossing the catwalk. I had a mini celebration when I grabbed the Hell's Retriever. Retriever on realistic Man, mode. Let's go. <laughs> All this was thanks to Blaze Phase, Victorious Tortoise, and Death Perception. <laughs> Dude, what a loadout. I then had my first bozo moment, as I'm gonna call it. Because right here, I ended up ending the round at the worst possible location with no points to my name. So at this point, I was like really nervous. Well, I guess I was nervous this whole game, but compared to my normal level of nervousness while playing realistic, this was like double that. I don't even have enough points to get the spoon. Well, that's not what I wanted to fucking do, that's for sure. I did not know that they were both gonna insta-die. And I feel like now's a good time to say that you might look at certain things in my loadout, like suit up, and think, oh, well you have so many crutch things on, this isn't hard at all. Not to play spoiler just yet, but this recording is five hours long. And even with things like suit up that give me temporary armor or dying wish, which gives me a second chance, trust me whenever I say that this is still, without a doubt, the hardest thing that I have ever done in COD Zombies. Harder than the reverse rainbow perk challenge on Origins. Harder than the Mephistopheles boss fight without going down. Harder than anything I've ever done in Zombies. But anyways, I ended up surviving here, so I grabbed the spoon and the monkey bombs and opened up Pack-a-Punch to start the Easter egg. Now right here, I still had the speedrun strat in my brain, and you'll be able to see this a lot throughout this video. I spawned in the warden, and then I went to go prep the wall. With a one hit down, that was not the smart thing to do, so this is my second bozo moment of the game. But not for long, because when I got to the warden's office, I quickly thought that if I lure him to tonic so he can lock it, I'll have more than enough time to go prep the wall. And that's exactly what I did, so we're gonna take down that bozo count, and we're gonna put it back to one for now. So just like in normal difficulty, I interacted with the electric chair and the cranorium to spawn in the bird. Now, to be completely honest, this part of the easter egg was pretty easy. At this point, I was starting to get used to the one hit down. Plus, this step overall isn't hard when you know how to do it. So at this point, I thought, you know, this isn't too bad so far. If only I would have known how badly I just jinxed myself right there. But I didn't know that yet. So with my boost in confidence, I went to go try and get the Magma Gat. Do you see the problem here yet? I'm trying to get the Magma Gat with a one hit down with no shield, no sword, or a good weapon. So just like that, the Bozo counter is back up to two. That didn't take long, did it? What? I didn't know this at the time, but the monkey bombs can apparently glitch out pretty easily on this step. For some reason, out of the three monkey bombs that I threw, two of them ended up glitching out and didn't kill a single zombie. So because of that, I ended up getting trapped here and I got hit so Dying Wish activated. I really started to panic here, so I used another raindrops to try and grab the nuke before Dying Wish runs out, and the drops somehow came toward me so I could collect them. I guess it's because some of the drops spawn out of bounds, but I didn't know this was a thing, and it's the only reason I survived here. Oh, yeah, I hate this. Fuck that blunder guy, dude. Dude, two of those monkey bombs didn't do any damage. Maybe I just don't do the magma guy because that is just way too stressful, especially when monkey bombs don't work. So I decided to bail on the magma guy, and since I left the warden's house, I ended up losing it. So I had to get it back with the mystery box, but I ended up waiting until I finished the bird stuff so I could potentially get the monkey bombs back as well. But I found the first bird and bought zombie shell. Then I ended the round and looked for the second bird. Oh, I didn't know that was a location. Finding the second bird wasn't hard at all. The hard part was actually killing the zombies. And speaking of killing zombies, since it took so long to get to the end of the round, I accidentally ended the round. So now I can't see where the third bird's gonna spawn. Shit. Well, not even worth trying to go there. 
honestly. At this point, I was pretty worried, but thankfully, once again, Jason Bladell was watching from above. Not that he's dead or anything, that's not what I mean. <laughs> and I ended up finding the bird pretty early on. But then, I found something else that caught me off guard. What the fuck? What the fuck? Bro, why doesn't he have any limbs? What? What is going on? Why are there so many zombies without limbs? Besides this weird glitch that I now know happens with Zombie Shell, this round was pretty easy, and I was feeling pretty good at this point. So good, in fact, that I once again started to run my mouth about how easy this was. You know, this ain't too bad so far. This is pretty manageable. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, but it's not too bad. I seriously do not know why I kept running my mouth playing this game. But if I could time travel, the first thing I would do is go back to before I started this game and I'd smack the shit out of my past self for saying this. Because let me tell you, I regret every single word. But anyways, I got the fourth bird and got the first code from the Cronorium for the challenges. And then I went and got my upgraded shield. While getting the upgraded shield, unfortunately, I was not able to get monkey bombs, but I did end up getting the Blundergat back. And when I got the Blundergat back, I ended up saying, screw the Magma Gat, and I'm just gonna stick with the Sweeper. So the first challenge I got was the challenge at the- No! BO4, come on! Now, in case you don't know what just happened, there is a timer in the background of every single round in Black Ops 4. And once zombies stop spawning and you're down to the last couple in the round, there is a 10 minute timer in the background of the game. And when that 10 minute timer is up, the zombies will automatically bleed out and advance to the next round. This feature right here is what made this easter egg so hard to beat. Like this happened multiple times in my game. And every single time it happened, all it did was add more time onto this game. Which was pretty annoying, but... The first challenge was the new industry step, which just so happens to be the worst possible challenge I could have gotten first. What made this even worse is when I got back, I still had the speedrun mindset in my head for some reason. So I actually shocked the ghost to start the challenge before I even checked if I had enough shield blast to kill the ghost. After I started it, I got overwhelmed with all the dogs damaging my shield. So I had to end the round, and if you know anything about this step, then you know it's already hard enough to do mid round on normal difficulty, let alone on realistic. So, I shouldn't have to say it, but I did end up failing this challenge. I'll tell you what though, I never cared about having to flip the round if you fail a challenge. I actually kind of like it because it forces you to play better. But it really started to get on my nerves when I started failing challenges on Realistic. Because especially later on in the Easter Egg once I'm in the late teens, it takes 20, 25, even sometimes up to 30 minutes for me to finish a round. But eventually, I ended the round and got the new code and put it in the number panel to get a different challenge, which, again, I did not know this was a thing. I've done this easter egg a lot of times, and I've never seen a challenge change when you fail a step. This time, I got the Warden Escort Challenge. So I killed the zombie in the cafeteria to spawn the ghost, and before I started, I checked to see if there was an insta-kill in one of the two jail cells with power-ups in them. And there actually was one, so I grabbed it and started the challenge. I thought this was going to be the hardest challenge to beat on Realistic, but in between the insta-kill I got and my sword with the refreshment elixir, this challenge actually wasn't that bad at all. After my sword went away, I knew that the ghost still had full health, so I could just run away from him, and the zombies wouldn't be able to kill him before he reaches the orb. So with that, there is the warden challenge done. After I beat the warden challenge is when I got my strat down pat. So what I did was I started at the showers, and looped my way to the warden's house, and got shield and tomahawk kills along the way. Then I used a fast travel in the warden's house, and once on the other side, I used a spectral blast to kill all the zombies that just pour out of this window, and then I just repeat from here. It's a very tedious process, and it's not that fast, but on realistic mode, and especially without the magma gap, I had no other choice but to play this cautiously. Now, as I said, this is a very safe way to kill the zombies, but let me tell you, I got really sick and tired of hearing Dempsey's quote on this map over and over again. <laughs> Dude, I've heard this quote so many fucking dry. times this game. I had to have heard it at least 30 times already. He says this every single time that you fast travel, and it got real annoying real fast. At the end of round 14, I started the next challenge, which was the new industry step yet again. Since this was the last zombie in the round, I used him to spawn in the ghost, but I didn't officially start the step until I got to the end of the next round. Something weird happened though whenever I was trying to get to this point, as, well, you know what, I'll just let you see the footage. Wait, why do I have three bars of health? What? What? I swear, y'all, I'm still in realistic. This is the same game as before. See? Same thing. 
same equips and everything. It was just a visual glitch, and I still did have a one hit down. But anyways, at the end of the round, I spawned in the ghost and sucked them to hopefully beat the challenge this time. Yes, good, go that way. I don't know how long this crawler has to live. I'm questioning on whether or not I should just block him and suck him. So honestly, the sweeper making crawlers is really good. Let's go! Okay, I got the two hardest challenges out the way. The only one that I'm remotely concerned about is the showers one. That's a lot of zombies. Hello. I was feeling really good at this point because the new industry step and the warden step were the hardest challenges to beat unrealistic, and I just beat them both. I was starting to feel like this was actually possible at this point, but I didn't think of how annoying it would be if I just so happened to fail another challenge. More on that later. These rounds take forever to complete. I know I've said it multiple times already in this video, but trust me when I said it legit took 20 to 30 minutes just to get down to the end of each round. Ever seen what a propeller can do to a guy? Ugh. Never have a bachelor party on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Dude, that's such a funny quote. It's a dry. So, dry. so dry. Again, every time I think I'm at the end of the round, they just keep fucking spawning. Oh, and I'm dry. back to one health bar now. Okay, game, whatever. At Another dog just heat. fucking spawned, dude. So this dry. is insane. It's been legit 15 minutes since I beat the new industry stuff. Oh, right. fuck. I forgot I had... I'm gonna pass out. back for it. I don't care what it is. Please be a max. Please. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, okay. The next challenge I got was the dock. So, of course, I got to the last zombie and did the Morse code. Now, I'm pretty good at brute forcing the Morse code, so this part of the step didn't take me more than, like, 20 seconds. So, after that, I spawned in the ghost in the infirmary and escorted him down to the docks. This challenge was definitely the easiest one to do on Realistic. Even with no Magma Gad, this was a fairly easy step. But before I started the next challenge, it dawned on me that if I keep buying the shield as often as I am, it's going to start costing more in price pretty soon. So there's yet another thing to worry about. I don't know how much longer that's going to be 2,500 points for, that shield buy. I thought it would have been 5,000 by now. Just remember that every single round, this is what I go through. And killing the zombies isn't even the bad part. The worst part about this strategy is the voice line. So dry, oh my god, I'm so tired of hearing this quote. I am so tired of hearing it. Oh, fuck me. Oh my god, they're still spawning, dude. No. Dude, if that zombie show ended the round, I would have ended the... 30 minutes later, I started the power step. This step takes forever when you're playing cautiously. Because this is how I did the power step. Step 1, I spent 2 minutes making my way from the east power to the west power. Step 2, I did the Simon Says step. Step 3, I got the 3 generator symbols that I needed and grabbed the punch card. Step 4, I made my way from west power to the spawn room. Step 5, I got the punch card symbol. Oh, come on. Dude, I'm like 30 seconds away from finishing the step. You couldn't have waited one more minute to bleed out? Thanks, Jason Blundell. <laughs> so I went back to Overliable and spent another 30 minutes slogging through these hellishly long rounds. Like, seriously, I cannot stress to you enough how long these rounds took to complete. They take longer to complete than high rounds on Cold War. And yes, I'm being serious about that. They take that long. Oh, look. Silly me thinking that we were at the end of the round. What a fucking bozo I am. So dry. Fuck! But when I finally got to the end of the round, I go to finish the power step and... Pay attention real quick. I'm going to leave you with the raw footage of this step and the cheat sheet. Let me know if you see something wrong here. Just, just keep an eye out for it. It won't be hard to see. Now I got a couple minutes to kill. Did you see that? Did you see it? I put the wrong code in. What?
And I got to advance to the next fucking round. Keep in mind that this was three hours into the Easter egg. I still had two challenges left before the boss fight. And now that I failed this step, this adds at least another hour to the game. I was in denial here at this point. So I went back to the book in the warden's house, just hoping, no scratch that. I was praying to the Treyarch gods that the numbers would reappear and I didn't have to flip to the next round and... I fucking quit. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm debating whether or not I want to continue playing. I'm, I'm so fucking drained. I'm gonna have to go through at least another half hour of killing zombies. Just to have to redo this whole fucking step again. I sat on pause here for 30 minutes, questioning if I wanted to continue on with this. Like, I was actually thinking about ending the game right here. I made my T-chart, wrote down the pros and cons of continuing, and ultimately, there was one reason why I continued. It wasn't because of the time wasted, no. It wasn't because I was almost done either, no. The only reason that I continued on with this Easter egg was because of my elixir count, or specifically, my raindrops count. I could have easily tried this easter egg again in like a week or two or something like that. But I knew that I wouldn't have enough raindrops for another attempt. And raindrops was so helpful in this easter egg that I knew that I couldn't just waste half of the raindrops I already had just to end the game. So for that reason, I continued playing. But even with saying that, I did not play this next part of the game safe by any means. Legit, I was jumping around corners spraying with my insta-kill, I was spamming one weapon shots and my sword, and then I got hit right here which sent me into Dying Wish. And I easily could have died right here, which to be honest, I would have been fine with, but I had my sword so I pulled it out and it saved me so I took it as a sign to play safe again. I just wish I could have gotten the Magma Gat, as I know this would have made this a lot easier. Yay. Guys, I'm having so much fun right now. I'm so fucking pissed off about that. Like, y'all have no fucking clue. At this point, I'm just blitzing. Can you fucking die? You know the situation by now. 30 minutes later, I retried the power step while honestly giving probably what is my most depressed monologue ever. I've had it. Oh. oh, it feels so good to never have to fucking hear that quote again. Oh my god, it's round. I don't know if I've said five words in the past 20 minutes. I just don't want to fucking play this anymore. But I also don't want to end the game. So I'm just sitting here in silence. Pissed off as all hell. Because I'm a fucking moron that doesn't know how to read symbols properly. Got to the exact same spot in the power step where I was shocking the ghost and, well, you know what happens. For fuck's sake. You know, God forbid I do this step in one fucking round. Please be a dog round. Fuck. About halfway through the next round, I remembered that I only had one more generator to shock. So I went for a very risky play here and boy did it pay off. I'm going for the risky play. It was E, right? Yeah, okay. Going for the risky play. Oh, of course he's all the way over there. Yes. Oh, finally, dude. Oh. I've been on this step for over an hour. Oh my god. Actually, it was two hours thanks to needing to progress through multiple rounds. At the end of the round, I tried for the monkey bombs to make the shower step and the boss fight just a little bit easier. Even though I know I can beat the shower step in like a minute, and I know that I probably will be fine in the boss fight. At this point, I just want all the help I can get. Please be monkeys. Please. Oh, fuck off. So after my temper tantrum, I just sucked it up and did the banjo step. Now this step was honestly pretty easy. Since the zombies are so fast on realistic, I was able to fill up the banjo just by using my sword. 
In fact, I did the step so fast, I used my refreshment to refill my sword's meter, and I ended up doing the same exact glitch that I did last time, to where it consumed the elixir but didn't give me the effects of it. Oh! But nonetheless, after the banjo step was completed, I was pretty excited, safe to say. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Oh my god. I'm almost done. After I completed all five challenges, I used the raindrops to kill all the zombies so I could safely put the five orbs on the map. And after I did that, I was starting to realize that I was actually going to beat this easter egg. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my god. Before I went in the boss fight though, I made the very wise decision to advance the round one more time to refresh all of my elixirs because if you don't know how Black Ops 4 works, the mega elixirs in this game can only be used one time per round. And I'll show you all in a minute, but in hindsight, I am so glad that I sucked it up and flipped to the next round. I'm like playing super risky, but at the same time, I'm also playing safe. Like I'm trying to get this round over with quick but I'm also trying to do it smart. Something I just found out, this trap charges your specialist weapon, which is pretty cool. No dog spawned, that's a good sign. I'll tell you what, burning these rounds has gotten a lot easier turning off the voice lines. Not having to hear it's so dry every single time I fast travel, it's a great feeling. It almost makes going through the pain I went through today worth it. When I got to the last zombie, I placed the summoning key in the warden's chest, and when I did, and I saw that cutscene start, I just could not hold back to joy. <laughs> uh, I should turn on the voice lines. Uh. Even if I die in this boss fight, I still have the accomplishment that I got off of the anger and bargaining step on realistic mode. That alone is a fucking W. When I was doing the power step and I somehow misinterpreted one of the symbols for another one and failed it, you can tell I was ready to just quit. I was so fucking ready to. But I took like a 20 minute break and then came back and I fought through hell and I beat it and we beat showers and here we are. Hold on, I'm about to get fucking B-Rad in the call. I want to see his live reaction to this shit. All right, talk. Check, check, mic check. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going crazy. I've been at this oh, for no. five fucking hours. No, I was gonna say, you sound like you're getting ready to go nuts here. Well, this is anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> you see anything? Tommy gun. Look in another Death corner. Exception. Wait. Oh shit. <laughs> oh wow. You got this man. You did it with the sweeper too? Yeah, dude, it's impossible to get the magma gat. Unrealistic. That's fair. So I kinda had no choice. Plus, this thing will be pretty good for the boss fight. I True. I hope. But is that warden behind me? Oh my god, what? Yeah. Hey, you didn't know the warden spawned there? What an interesting perk choice. Or, uh, yeah, elixir and uh, all right, perk choice. All right, zombie shell was a mistake. I tried to get blood wolf bite. Because that would really <laughs> help for, like, the shower step. And the, uh, yeah. warden step. But apparently I clicked zombie shell. So. Oh, whoops. <laughs> you do not understand what I fucking went through in this game. <laughs> this has been my literal definition of hell. Damn, that's really saying something too. <laughs> this was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in Zombies. Before I went into boss fight, I tried one final time to hopefully, finally, get the monkey bombs, and I didn't. One more hit? Of course not. But you know what, Brad? You know what? Who cares? I got up to this point without the monkey bombs. I don't need them for the boss fight. That clip right there is the definition of winner mentality. So after I gave that motivational speech, I killed the last zombie to flip to the next round, and I started the boss fight. The first phase of this boss fight was pretty easy, actually, thanks to Death Perception's modifier. So I beat the first phase, and during the second phase, one final crazy thing happened in this game. During the second phase, my run almost ended here. Five hours in, my run almost came to an end, and there was almost nothing I could have done about it. Shit. God, dude, my heart is fucking pounding. He's weak, arms are heavy. Ah! No! Oh. 
Okay, you're not toast yet. So as you just saw, I got trapped by the dogs and they ended up breaking my shield. If you don't know this map's easter egg, then one thing you need to remember is that the shield is crucial. You need it to beat the easter egg. So if I didn't end the round before going into the boss fight to refresh my elixirs, I would have been softlocked at this point and finishing the easter egg would have been literally impossible. But the crazy thing is, this isn't even the last time the dogs would try to ruin my game either. As about 30 seconds later, they kept hitting my shield and they almost broke it again, so I had to use my final raindrops to get a carpenter. Let me tell you, these dogs were a huge pain in this boss fight. They were a bigger threat than the wardens were. Oh, fuck. Got enough. I didn't even grab the fucking carpenter. Do I have one? Okay. Oh shit. I think you need one more. How many souls did you get? I got it. Oh thank god. <laughs> I, I miscalculated. After the bot ripped off and went in the dark mechanism, I popped one final suit up to secure the win. Waiting for Richtofen to come back up and stun the warden literally felt like an eternity. But when he finally stunned the warden, I used my sword to go invisible and finally kill the warden. Yeah, yeah, hurry up. Come on, hurry up, please. <laughs> I can't even see you. Stop taking so long. Oh! Oh. Oh. I know that don't go there ever again. No kidding. Bro, like, could you take any longer? <laughs> He's opening the door. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, please. Let's yes. fucking go. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. What? Dude, this Ow. took me almost five hours. Maybe even over that. Let's <laughs> say, I imagine it was probably just two with this run alone. You know the funny thing though? This was first so. fucking try. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Win. Does that mean we win? Yes, Dude. we won, Dempsey. We won indeed. Holy shit. And I thought I was psychotic for this map. <laughs> I can't fucking believe this, dude. <laughs> if you was ever thinking about going for this, don't. I had never intended on it. <laughs> but I can now officially call myself the blood of the dead god. I have beaten <laughs> this easter egg on every difficulty. No perks, random perks, one box, you name it, I've done it. I own this map. I am honestly at a loss for words right now. Like, damn man, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm at a loss for words too. Dude, this ending cutscene feels so- I haven't felt this way about Blood of the Dead, like, beating it, since the first time I did. Like, I feel <laughs> like I just conquered this game mode. <laughs> hardest difficulty, hardest zombies, easter egg, first try, no monkey bombs, aside from, like, five minutes, and they fucking glitched and almost got me killed. 2,861 <laughs> kills in 22 rounds. Dude. And no downs. Flawless victory. Well, yeah, it's realistic. I forgot that you don't have downs in, uh, <laughs> in realistic. Four hours, four minutes, and 30 seconds match time. <laughs> That's not including the breaks I've taken. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Like I said, I thought I was the blood of the dead king, but you're the blood of the dead god. Now, which map is next? Yeah, no, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> First try. This was last night. On stream. GG, man. GG. I've never seen a Blood of the Dead game where the minute in theater mode, the time frame is 243 hours. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put an accessory. I'll, I'll put the bomb <laughs> to remember it as that time I almost fucking blew everything up because I got mad on <laughs> Blood of the Dead. So there was the story of my Blood of the Dead realistic completion. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I had a blast making this video, but with saying that, this video took me around 40 hours in total to make. So if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and drop a like, and if you're new, hit that subscribe button. 
If you're wondering about how I'm so good at Blood of the Dead, then I will put a card on the screen right now to my Blood of the Dead updated Easter I got. It is the best one on this platform, so go check it out. If you don't want that, then why don't you go watch some useless COD Zombies information. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.